you know, taking us through what your expectation is for 2023. But let's take that discussion forward. Goldman Sachs has written a note where they suggest that India's growth is most likely to be moderate in the first half of FI23 with a fading reopening boost. Uh, corporate profits are predicted to grow 15% in 2023 and 2024. To discuss what to expect from the markets, we're joined by Sunil Call, the Asia-Pacific equity strategist at Goldman Sachs. Sunil, good morning and uh, happy new year to you and your entire team at Goldman Sachs. I just wanted your thoughts, uh, you know, on what the earlier guest was telling us, that if he had a choice, he wouldn't invest in equities this year. And perhaps there are better asset classes out there. Would you concur with that view? And what's the most prudent investment strategy uh, for 2023? Look, I think in terms of equity markets, we actually remain fairly bullish on the longer term prospects for Indian equity markets. Uh, but we actually started with the more market weight allocations because of uh, high valuations and the fact that we expect within Asia uh, rotation happening from India and ASEAN, which have been leaders to uh, North Asia, China and and uh, and the North Asian markets of Korea and Taiwan specifically. I think with regards to your question, Sonia, about asset classes, uh, we do concur somewhat with the with the notion that the fact that fixed rate rates are rising, there could be some re-asset allocation within households from equity markets to fixed income alternatives. And so if you look at equities versus bonds, the yield gap between equities and bonds, bonds are actually at, at multi-year lows. And so relative, relatively speaking, equities are less attractive to compare to bonds uh, compared to the history. Uh, but if you look at the longer term trajectory, as I said, India still looks at, at an attractive market from a secular growth perspective. All right. Hi, Sunil. Good morning. Uh, you know, Sunil, do you think this could be a year where if the globe doesn't perform, then India will outperform? That's will fall less. But if the global markets perform after having an off year in 2022, India could underperform? Do you think that's that's a possibility? Look, I mean, we are fairly optimistic on the Asian markets overall. Um, so we're sort of looking at mid-teen returns for the region overall. But as I said, look, India has been a strong outperformer for two years in a row. If you look at the last 30 years of India's history, there's only once in the last 30 years India has actually outperformed thrice in a row. And that was during 05 to 07 cycle when the when the global growth was also very strong, which is not the case, case this time around, right? So I think our base cases look, the region does, does fairly well. The first half will be led by China and North Asian markets, notably Korea. The second half, once the China rally becomes more mature, you can see India coming back and focus and and, and take the leadership. Uh, and uh, and uh, and we have a nifty year end target of 20,500, which is a sort of a uh, low team returns, but that will be kind of more back and loaded towards the second half of the year. Mm. <clears throat> Sunil, uh, good morning, uh, Prashant here. Uh, you know, you you cover a certain number of stocks uh, here in India. Uh, do you, uh, and I'm assuming those are the well-traded large liquid names, right? I mean, of course, you've got, like, got coverage in lots of mid-caps, uh, et cetera, as well. Uh, do you feel compelled to kind of expand that coverage universe to find newer ideas? Because, uh, you know, the ones where there is a lot of institutional coverage, it's, uh, you know, the large ones, valuations are, uh, you know, according to some, like, for example, the previous guest, perhaps full, not too much margin of uh, uh, safety, etc. Just wanted to understand how you think about that. Yeah, I think, uh, Prashant, you're right. I mean, in terms of valuations, look, I mean, India is uh, the most expensive market in the region, right? It's still trading at 22 times forward earnings, uh, which is which is higher than the, the rest of the markets in Asia. But the one, one comforting thing is that with the rally in the rest of the markets, notably at the strong uh, recovery we are seeing in China, the valuation gap between India and the rest of the markets is also uh, shrinking. And so if you looked at the peak in, uh, in at the end of October, India was trading at almost twice the valuations for the overall uh, Asian region at almost 22 times. The region was at 11 times. So we had a premium of about 100%. That has come down to around 65%. The long-term long, long -term average is, is around 30. So there is still some room for further uh, contra contraction. Uh, but the fact that other markets are catching up, uh, India's relative premium is, is at least come down. I think with respect to your question in terms of uh, whether you need to look at sort of more uh, stocks within mid or small caps, I would say, I mean, the India is a fairly large and liquid market overall. I mean, you've got sort of more than 2,000 odd stocks in the in, in the index, and then there is enough alpha to be generated within within the market. I would say even beyond the top uh, stocks, 
we we do like the broader theme of for example make in india and as you know a lot of those names are in in the sort of mid mid cap range and we actually recently published a, a series of reports together with our economists and and sector analysts covering that theme uh, which were sort of very bullish on so i think there are there are enough alpha opportunities within different thematic buckets which we can play uh, even beyond the large cap names can you uh, you know uh, just elaborate on this make in india theme a little more which are the pockets that you like because it's a fairly large umbrella and within that there's so many pockets right i mean there's defense which has done really well over the last one year but specifically what are you looking at in the, under this make in india umbrella yeah so we we did a, a deep dive on all the sort of 14 sectors that have been covered by the make by the pli schemes so we have sort of broadly bucketed them into three different categories the the major ones being the import substitution which will include include your electronics manufacturing autos and the likes of those and then the, the other broader bucket is the energy transition bucket which is your evs sol solar uh, batteries uh, the sectors like those uh, and then there is the some more sort of other sectors which are sort of more export oriented like as you said and and sort of more strategic sectors like defense and textiles um, so uh, in terms of the broader bucket i think uh, it's fairly Uh, reasonable to say that india has done a decent job when when it comes to electronic manufacturing and i think uh, mobile manufacturing is a good example so i think that sector including sort of autos and celleries those sectors are are the ones where we think that india is ready you don't need a, i mean you have a large domestic market uh, you already have some economies of scale so you don't need a lot of uh, know how or technology transfer uh, from from global companies and also you, these are not very capex intensive sectors so you're more likely to see profitability coming through into these sectors as opposed to sort of energy transition uh, bucket wherein you are talking about solar ev i think that's where you need a little bit of more energy transfer you need some uh, more 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 cap capex intensive and the gestation period for those sectors tends to be longer so we think that sort of material is more in to sort of beyond the five year bucket whereas the the other other sectors probably start to show up in the numbers in the 3 to 5 year uh, range Well, you know, Sunil, we have outperformed in the recent past, and that's predominantly because earnings growth as well is going to be the best in India. And that target of twenty thousand five hundred, it's premised that we get that mid-teens uh, earnings growth. What's the downside risk out there? Because there are some pockets of weakness that uh, may result in us not getting those mid-teens growth, and then in turn, it will reflect on the Nifty target as well. No, Nigel, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I think the fifteen percent. profit growth we are expecting as i said is actually higher than what we are expecting for the for the region on a two year basis uh, we are expecting 9% earnings growth for the region so india we do expect stronger profitability which is partly driven by the fact that the domestic economy is very strong but obviously i think there as you said there are downsides to to those i mean in terms of our numbers we are actually fairly in line with consensus but if you look at the sectoral mix we are a little bit more optimistic on financials uh, where actually the 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 balance sheets are really uh, are strong and that seems to be the consensus over which sector at, at the point uh, we are also as i said uh, more optimistic on the manufacturing sector that the sectors where and and energy included driven by the large cap uh, index heavyweight there but the sectors where we are actually below consensus are more in the externally linked sectors including infotech as an example as well as the consumer sensitive sectors because we are seeing some slowdown in the in the mid to higher high end consumption uh, but i would say i think the downside risk probably lie if you start to see slowdown in 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 consumption which hit some of the consumer sensitive sectors uh, but in terms of our estimates we are already sort of big uh, a moderation in top lines uh, the the reason we are a little bit more optimistic on the on the overall profitability is because we think margins have likely so bottomed out in terms of in, in in cost and so you could see actually in the next couple of quarters some margin expansion which is why we think that mid teen earnings growth is uh, is, is pretty achievable all right uh, sunil we'll leave it there thank you very much for your time good speaking with you and uh, thanks indeed for making the time here on cnbc tv 18 uh, you know the market still there 30 points uh, so uh, not very much is 17 927 on the nifty advanced decline is